we've said a couple of times that maybe it would have been better to use the load event of the grid and not the generic one, which only works in the case of a web panel without a grid or with a single grid. Using the load event of the grid, we anticipate a future need to enter another grid. Let's suppose that in the web panel that shows the information of a country, its name and its tourist attractions, we want to also add a grid with its cities. Before doing so, note that its navigation list indicates the load of a single grid, for now. Before adding the grid for the cities, let's insert a table with everything corresponding to the country's attractions, so that all that information is stored together. Next, let's insert another table for the city information. There, we'll insert the new grid made up of the attributes city ID and city name. Looking at its properties, we see that it's been named grid2 by default. Each grid may or may not have a base table. In this case, both grids have attributes, so both will have a base table. How do you know which one the generic load event code applies to? In fact, if we save, we see that the navigation list shows a warning error. It's showing the navigations that will have to be made to load each grid. And it's even understood that the formula to calculate the trips must belong to the grid one loading, but we're asked to specify this. And we'll do so. Now, when saving the object, the navigation list no longer shows the error. We'll run it, These are two independent navigations, but since both are related to the country received by parameter, in both of them, it's filtering by country. If, like for the attractions, we calculate the number of trips for the cities, we would like to calculate the number of attractions that each one has. Then we add a variable, attractions, to the grid and we'll calculate it every time a line is going to be loaded, that is, in the load event of the grid named grid2. Why is it not necessary to condition this formula to count only the attractions of the country and city? We run it. While generating, let's look at the navigation list. Within the load event that will be executed every time a record is found in the table of cities corresponding to the country received by parameter, the calculation of the count formula is triggered on attraction, filtering by country and city. To make it functionally the same as the other, we can add a variable to the grid to filter the cities shown and another to show the total of attractions of all the cities. And we've done it here. Note that we place the filter in the grid conditions using the like operator. We did not indicate a base transaction and saw that Genexus discovered it on its own, but it's in our interest to do so. All right, we had initialized the total trips variable in the generic refresh event. And now, we must also initialize the total attractions variable. But we have, in fact, three refresh events. The generic one, which is the one we've programmed for now, and we have a refresh of each grid. The order of execution of the events when the web panel is executed for the first time will be the start event, the generic refresh event first, next, the refresh of the first grid, and then, if it has a base table, that table will be run through by filtering the corresponding records and executing the load event of that grid for each one. If it doesn't have a base table, then the load event of the grid is executed only once. And then the same with the refresh and load events of the second grid. In this example, the variables total trips 
and total attractions should be initialized in the refresh event of each grid and not in the generic one. The reason is that if later on we need to change the filter variables of a grid, we may refresh only that grid and not the rest of the screen. Then we would change our events in this way. Of course, the addition of more grids means that the refresh command that we have seen in another class programmed in a user event can be specialized. For example, we have the command form.refresh that will cause the entire page to be refreshed, executing start, generic refresh, refresh and load for each grid. The generic refresh command that we had seen causes the generic refresh and refresh and load of each grid in other words, everything but start, to be executed. And now we also have the refresh method of a grid, which will refresh only the grid. That is to say, it will run the grid refresh and load once or n times, depending on whether it has a base table or not. As for the load command, things are a little different. When there is more than one grid, the load command alone can only be written within the load event of the grid in question. And to load a line in one of the grids from a user event, we'll have to use, necessarily, the load method of the grid in question. Here we've only seen one example of parallel grids, but grids can also be nested, like for each commands. For example, if we wanted to show the selected country with the information we saw before, but in a related way, we implement it here. For one grid to contain another, it has to be a special type of grid, freestyle, and not tabular. It's called freestyle grid. This grid will run through the country city table, and for each city found, it'll run the refresh and load of the second grid, the nested grid, which will then search for the attractions of that country city. There we can notice how the information is related. In the navigation list, we see that grid two, the city's one, is running through that table, country city, filtering by the country received by parameter. Then, the load of grid 1, which corresponds to the attractions, is running through the attractions table, filtering by the country and the city in which it's positioned in each record of country city. And that's why this at sign here is displayed for city ID. If we run it, we can see it here. Paris and its two attractions, Nice and its attraction. There's much more to explore about this topic. Here, we'll only see this introduction.